Joining us now is Hema Shroff Patel of Amba, a social enterprise based between Mumbai and Maheshwar. Uh, Hema, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Hi, everyone. As we get on to the session, I would like to start by asking you, how did you first come to know about Maheshwar and how did that uh, journey with Maheshwar Textiles begin? So for me, um, the story actually starts back in 1991. Um, in 1991, I was shopping for our wedding and I wanted to buy some beautiful handcrafted saris <clears throat> and gifts for people where I knew they'd go back, you know, the proceeds of the sales would go back to um, something of, of value. And I was introduced to Sally and Richard Holker. And at the time I was transitioning between jobs. So, um, I, they, they asked me where I lived and I was living in the suburbs at the time. <clears throat> and um, they were looking to have a, an exhibition out in Juhu. So I volunteered and I helped them with this exhibition. And as a thank you, they took me to Maheshwar. And I went to Maheshwar for the first time in October of 1991. And it was quite a trip. It was amazing. Just arriving on the banks of the Narmada, I, we arrived across the river and the entire fort stood, you know, sort of was there in front of us, just overwhelming. I was completely gobsmacked. And we, um, we crossed the river and walked up through the ghats, through the inner temple, um, the inner temple courtyard. And on the way up into the fort where their family home was, was the first unit of Reva society in this beautiful outdoor courtyard. And I was completely, <clears throat> I was completely smitten when I saw that. So I think the Holkers would probably say I hired myself at that time. And I started really in the back office doing marketing and working on a number of other projects for them um, and helping at all these exhibitions. And it was through all my interactions with the textiles and with the clients and with the weavers that drew me to actually thinking about, you know, possibly starting a label. <clears throat> so, um... Amba as a label um, pushes contemporary boundaries. And uh, could you give us a few examples of how you've done that? Yeah, so I think that's really important to me. Um, and I think it's, it's a tagline that I'd say my team now is so tired of hearing about because we're always talking about how important it is to know the provenance of the weave and to know where it comes from. And um, considering Maheshwar has had such a rich journey Reva Society was founded in, in 1979, but Ahilya Bai Holker brought, you know, weavers came to uh, Maheshwar during her time when she ruled, which was the middle, uh, middle of the 17th, uh, 1700s. So considering there was such a rich heritage and it's such a refined cloth, and I'm going to show you my, my first sari, my first ever, sorry, there's not much, it'll be hard for you to see the transparency but this is a beautiful sari from about 30 years ago that has a Mohinya border. It's a traditional border. The border is done through an extra warp. I think you have to lift it up a bit more so we can see the border. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> yeah. So this is sort of the back side of the sari with the palu. And um, we do our, we, our saris are woven with an extra warp insert. We all, and this particular sari has a few puttis. So those are extra weft inserted, but it's special also because you see the border crossing over in the pala as an extra weft. So it's been woven by a very highly skilled weaver, but what may be difficult for you all to see, and I'm going to show you here, is how transparent, like there's a translucency. It, you know, as we know, chanderi saris, and as we know, um, Maheshwari saris are made from very fine cotton and silk. So there's this, it's, the, it's very gossamer. So for me, um, I think that, you know, preserving traditional techniques and pushing contemporary boundaries is, is it's important to know the provenance of the piece. So early days, I'm gonna show you one or two more examples. Early days when we started creating our shawls and I'm showing you one of our first shawls, probably our, I'd say our second shawl. This is the Chatai border. And this sari, I mean, this, this textile, this shawl, is a, um, the early, in my early days when we decided to get into 
uh, shawls and stoles, I was very keen to bring other fibers into Maheshwar. And um, a very dear friend who eventually joined our board, Rekha Bhatia, gave me sort of a, a weaving 101 lesson in her weaving studio because I'd seen so many Pashmina silk uh, um, shawls come into the market in the early 2000s. And I thought, right, they've got a good thing going, wonderful colors, these amazing vibrant shot colors with runny pink and, you know, a lovely mango, but they're all very flat. And I said, you know, we can do something very different in Maheshwar. We can work with our double shuttle. We can work with our, our borders. We can work with our fine, fine yarns and create something quite, can you, do you, are you able to see that? Yeah, we can, I can see, I can see all the different lines connecting through. Yeah. And I think the other key thing in our early days was still holding on to the borders. The borders are so important in Maheshwar, but actually extracting elements of the borders and moving them around, finding a new balance and using, we started working with a range of merino wool at the time. Is there time, do you have time for one more quick yeah, the last one, quickly. <laughs> last one. All right. So this one's special also. This is our sparkle stole, and it's been a classic for years. And here we tried to achieve, achieve um, sheen instead of shine. We were working with a lot of metallic yarn in Maheshwar at that time. And, you know, you'd see the metallic is quite sh uh, shiny on the sari. So we created a technique where we, we wound merino wool around our... Um, metallic thread and we wove it into the weft and you get this beautiful beautiful again quite light and transparent but you have sheen but not shine so that's what I mean when I say holding on you know to very integral skill sets that have been passed down from generations and so Amba strives to work with the borders and work on the same loom setup with very refined yarns and we brought wool and we brought linen and a few other yarns into our repertoire. You actually can see, uh, you know, the evolution from the sari to what you've been doing with the Maheshwar textiles. Yes. Um, and I know that uh, one of the, uh, one of your key collaborators, of course, is, is Vaseem. Yeah. And um, I want you to tell me a little bit about uh, Women Weave and how Vaseem came into the life of Amba. Yes, yes, that's that, that was a very important moment for us. So um, once Sally had set up Reva Society and she and, and Richard had the whole organization sort of up and running, Sally wanted to give, there were so many people in the town of Maheshwar who still did not have employment. And she wanted to give employment to women with no weaving background. So women, we've had two objectives. The first objective was to train those women who had no weaving background. and. The symbol of that story became the kadi, uh, the, the yarn became kadi because it was an easier yarn to use to train women. And it was very good at disguising. If you, if you created a piece of textile and wove it, you could disguise the, um, the irregularities in the weaving. And the second project that she uh, uh, sort of embarked on, which was about eight years ago, was to set up a handling school. And I'm thinking about all the conversations earlier today because when Sally thought about this, she thought we're going to bring all these weavers, you know, weavers who are third generation weavers who want to weave, who have these amazing skill sets, but create all these bridges so they can collaborate, teach them business skills, find a platform for them where we can build bridges to the market, to designers, to various, to, to various other communities that, you know, we can work with. And in the very first evening batch, which was informal, we were not even a formalized um, uh, handling school at that point. Um, uh, Wasim was one of the first, and he was in that informal batch. And they introduced um, uh, Wasim to me because I was looking for somebody to work on the ground with me in Maheshwar. Okay, so now we're just going to quickly go over to the, the videos that Vaseem has uh, recorded and sent us from Maheshwar. Um, yes. And that's a, that's a treat because I know that he used his, uh, his phone to literally take us through the community and through uh, the school. So Andy, if you could just bring up those videos, please. Hi, my name is Vasim Ansari. I am running Amba workshop in town called Maheshwar. 
Maheshwar is situ uh, situated on the bank of uh, the Narmada River in central India. Uh, Maheshwar has been a center of handloom weaving since the rule of Ahilya Bai Holkar during 17th century. It is also said that weavers migrated to Maheshwar to serve the royal patronage and weave sarees and turbans to be given away as a royal gift. Uh, years later, when the uh, handloom craft facing difficult time, uh, descendant of Ahilya Bai, uh, Sally and uh, 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 Richard Holker founded Reva Society, uh, an NGO, in 1979 to revive the craft and uh, give work to the skilled weavers. I am the third generation weaver. Uh, my grandfather wore turbans. Uh, my uh, parents both are very fine weavers. Uh, they were some of the first uh, 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 weavers to join Reva Society and they worked there for uh, many years. Uh, my father was also a unit in charge of Reva. We are now at my home at Ahilya Vihar Colony. This weavers colony made for the weavers uh, of Reva. I am lucky to live here as uh, my parents get uh, subsidized loan for uh, uh, buy and home in this beautiful colony. I went to school at Ahilya Baljyoti school which is uh, run by Reva. Weaver's family and loom surrounded me all through my childhood. My parents dream of my to becoming an engineer. So I applied for engineering and went for further studies. It was during those days uh, that Shalini Devi was setting up uh, the handloom school for weavers children. I was inspired uh, my friend uh, to join the first uh, informal classes. We were exposed to a new world uh, and uh, we got uh, to in interact with designers from NIFT and NID. We learned to value the textile heritage that has been passed down to us from our elders. I completed my engineering degree. Uh, through my training at the handloom school. I felt confident to pursue weaving. Our mentor Mr. Hemanji played an important role in uh, that decision as he also introduced me to Amba and Hemanji. That was beginning of my journey with Amba. I can remember that I was given uh, the challenge to weave sparkle stone which is the classic design of Amba. Uh, during those early days, I invited Hemaji to my home and to our surprise, she had known <laughs> my parents from initial Reva days when uh, she was volunteering at one of Reva's first exhibition. So that was lovely Wasi, back to us here in Bombay at the Amba Home Studio. And now I'd like to introduce you to Darshana Bhatia. Hi, dear Divan. So lovely to have Dashna here. It's her first visit to our home studio since um, the lockdown. So she's really happy to be here for the artist's first platform. Dashna and I have known each other a long time. We began our journey uh, meeting up at, in the Reva Society days and she's done a lot of work and projects with us over the years. She's come on board full time for the last five or six years working with us extensively in design and in our technical evolution. We're going to talk about a few of our design practices today, and I wanted to start with a very simple product from early days. It is called the Amrita Cross Stole, and the Amrita Cross Stole was born from this lovely painting by Amrita Shergill called Mary Cemetery. It's a 1939 painting. So early inspirations were really color palettes and little details. And in this case, the color palette and, and sort of pine greens and um, sort of, you know, the, the green tones, but also the cross element has been brought into our design in on the, on the border edges and through the center, you can see the overall cross pattern. So those were the early days. We then kind of started to dive deeper and create mood books that were far more detailed. And, you know, we, we, we looked at larger themes and in this case, um, I'm going to talk to you about a very special collection we did, which was inspired by this painting. Um, this wonderful courtesan came into my mailbox one evening from a friend called Pia Rampa, who said, this speaks to me, this says Amba, I mean, you know, the colors and all of it speak to me, we have to do something. And that led us to explore Windy Palace, 
We road trip there from Jaipur, discovered all their stunning mural paintings and really narrowed it down to the Chitra Mahal apartment that was a fantastic tribute to all of these Krishna Leela paintings done with this blue green palette. And what we loved is that the backdrop of a, a particular triptych that we used a lot in our work. So there was Krishna playing in his playground. There he was with, you know, playing with, um, in the Ras Mandala, playing with the gopis, fooling around. And the whole backdrop were all these wonderful banana leaves. And the structure of the banana leaves really, um, I think Dashna was really, really excited about trying to create something, a woven structure out of those leaves. So we did the opaque and the transparent. We tried to create the leaves and the ridging with extra yarn, thicker yarn at the ridging. So that's that. Um, so that that's how the banana leaf stone was born. So we've shared a few of our inspirations, um, um, things that have touched our soul here in India, you know, the rich Indian heritage in art and in architecture. But now we're going to head west and we're going to tell you a little bit about a collection that we created and conceptualized in 2016. I had gone over to New York City on a, um, to work on a show and while I was there I spent the, the day at the Guggenheim studying Agnes Martin's paintings. I had fallen in love with the minimal aspects of her work and how much her work resonated, all of her paint strokes and brush strokes really resonated the warp and weft in our work and I wanted to be able to capture that feeling in our paintings. One of her early pieces was this little untitled piece and we tried to capture that in a cotton piece which we wove in West Bengal. We wanted to capture the arc, like the big throne design that's on the edge of the painting and we also wanted to cap capture the sectionality of the graphite with the canvas as the background. So as you can see, there is the extra weft um, little arc pattern at the bottom woven into the, uh, uh, into the stole. And we worked with the sectionality by taking away yarn. So what we did was added thick yarns and took away yarns in our product to reflect the sectionality in her painting. So that gives you a glimpse into our work and our design process. Um, I think Amba's, one of the most unique aspects about the way we work is how we design and how we base our work on theme-based collections. And what I think it does for Wasim, Darshan and I is it really pushes our boundaries in another way. We're, we're trying to push ourselves into creating contemporary, but diving deeply into subject matter helps us find all of these beautiful subtle elements which we then which then find them their way into our work and they weave their way into our work quite magically. We're going to go back to Maheshwar right now to our um, to our workshop where you can actually see how our products are made. Hello, this is my speech uh, and we are in our workshop. And we are going to our workshop. Welcome to our workshop. When our guests, clients, buyers, and textile group come to our workshop, we give them a respect and welcome with this uh, yellow flower mala. As we are here at the Amba workshop, we have four rooms and a team of highly skilled weavers who specialize in the delicate weaving of uh, wool, silk, and linen. Uh, the traditional Maheshwari room works on two shafts. You can see there is two shafts. Uh, there is a two pedal and there is a dobby. In, in the dobby, there is a lattice system. And you can see the bed pegs in lattice system. Uh, two Add the extra warm water element, uh, the beautiful amber shawl uh, are woven on this same traditional looms. There will be beauty uh, and soulfulness in handloom that power loom uh, will not have. It will be done. As you can see, this is the traditional uh, handloom dupatta. 
woven in traditional loom here you can see the borders which came from uh, the ghats pattern you can see there is a kangra there is a muthra there is a v there is a diamond and this muthra we took here in um, our amba product in very simple way so <clears throat> it looks like modern but uh, woven in uh, traditional loom Amba's working culture is very inclusive at all stages. Hema ji, Darshna ji have always in, encouraged me to participate and give uh, suggestions in our meetings. My ideas are appreciated and used in making sampling and uh, final products. I really enjoyed the uh, interaction because it increases my interest and uh, uh, give me self confidence. Uh, me and Amba is very transparent, profit sharing with viewers and give uh, them uh, to fair wage. Our viewers like to do Amba works as it is challenging due to uh, use of new new yarns. Uh, we also do year end meeting and uh, our viewers we uh, uh, share them with uh, <coughs> our uh, uh, show collection photos and uh, photo shoot. We also tell them the happy customer stories. In our craft, one side is happy and other side have many challenges. In design and processing when you innovate something. In 2014, we first worked with tie dye natural dye yarn, which dyed in bio dye. Uh, we sent warp silk yarn to, the, to them, but uh, when yarn came, uh, after dyeing, it gets mesh uh, because they don't know how to make handle and how to handling the yarn. So Amba sent me to see uh, their process and uh, teach them how to handle yarn. And after that, uh, uh, which can which we can easily use uh, uh, the uh, yarn in our hand. My interest is in innovating, but uh, tradition is in our roots. So we try to uh, find a balance. That was Wasim from Maheshwar. We are going to just put you back onto the Bombay feed in a moment. So this is Amba's 20th year in textiles. Um, actually, we've been celebrating it since September. And what we wanted to do this year was bring together a very special collection. We went back through all our design archives and selected 20 textiles to, to represent 20 years. And we basically placed our textiles in three categories. The first category was choosing our most special ones which were greatest hits. The products where clients came back to us time and time again and said, please bring this back out, we'd like to see more of this. Our second category was technical evolution where we felt we had evolved yarn evolved through natural dye and evolved through our weaving processes to bring in a new textile to our collection and our repertoire, uh, into our archives. And our third, um, our third category was choosing pieces where the design married our themes really, really well and was reflected in that. So once we had those set up, what we did was we had a big launch party back in late September, early October for our 20th year and we created 20 installations which we, where we cleared out this entire home studio and we made the installations on these wonderful bamboo ladders, had them strewn about the, uh, this, the home studio, and we gave textile tours where we walked through, walked everybody through and told our journey in textiles through 20 mood ladders. We are going to show you one of those right now. It's called the Sham Stole, and it's one of our most special ones. We're showing you that clip from our 20th journey. Clothes. The other one is the Ras Mandala, where Krishna reappears beside every gopi in this circular fashion. And the third is Krishna raising Mount Govardhan. And we loved it and we wanted to figure out how we could use that triptych. We knew we'd use the color palette, but how can we use that? The other thing that we got a lot of um, design inspiration from were the steps all over Bundi. 
We reconstructed it for our launch out of cardboard. Darshanam who works very closely with us and who makes the hand makes the handbags and now works with me yeah. full time. She constructed it. And the class our classic border for Bundi became the steps of Bundi Palace. It has three panels, and this again was an exercise conducted in Maheshwar with Wasim, myself, and Darshana. And when we zoned in on the three panels, this is what Wasim said to us. He said, Hemaji, I think because we want to represent Govardhan, the panel that has the representation of that story should have our very strongest silk yarn in it. And we should build around that yarn because it will appear in the denting texture that the yarn is built up and you have the heaviest and the thickest yarn in the center of that. I have to see what that is here. It's here. So that is what's happening in this. And there's that slight ridging in this that you'll see. In the Krishna stealing the gopi's clothes, the entire, um, the entire sort of strategy was to leave out threads and have empty dents. When you leave threads out and you weave and you put enough spacing into the yarn layout, you get a bit of waviness and movement, which is also quite beautiful. And the Ras Mandala was all about just uniformity. So if Krishna is appearing be be beside each gopi, it's just basically a repeat that just keeps repeating. It's just very uniformed, which is this panel here. Now, the other reason this is a very special shawl, the Sham stole, and Sham, as you know, is a name of uh, one of Krishna's names. And some of the darkest bits of the Krishna of the Krishna Leela paintings had that midnight blue. But here we come back to our natural dye story. We were unable to crack the yarn dye. Between our Tagore collection and this collection, we finally cracked the yarn dye. We went back to bio dye, started working on high twists because we understood those were the strong yarns sampled a range of yarns and we were able to crack it and then we learned how to yarn dye yarns in natural dyes and then weave them. So this is a completely naturally dyed yarn then woven piece. It is it takes 15 days to create it. It goes through five pairs of hands in the process. Yesterday morning we had Dr. Bosco Hendricks here who runs BioDye and he was on the trail with us, you know, textile trail, and he paused at this to bring up a really sweet story of when we were doing this collection. And he said, I can, he saw these with the little bits yeah. of white. The speckle. And the speckle and the flex. And he said, oh my God, Hema, do you remember? I called you. The parcel had been dispatched with all your Hank yarns. And the boys had saved a sample. And I had just come in that day and I was aghast that it went to you with the white bits showing, because you can see here that this is how the hanking is done. So our hank, that's a warp hank. When that is opened up, it will be a 50 meter warp. But when it's tie-dyed, you, in sections, depending on the size of the tie-dye you want, you rubber, you rubber strip it. And they had left little bits exposed, which didn't catch either the blue or the black. And of course, we loved it. Yeah. Most of the things we end up loving are born out of the mistakes, right? Whether we're, you know, not whether we're working in natural dye, whether we're weaving on a sample blanket. So I said to Bosco, nothing had been put on the loom. I said, let's put it on and we'll see. It may end up being beautiful than it was. So this time when they reproduced it, they went back into doc their documentation and remind up, reminded us that we left the bits yeah. of white. Do you want that the same this time? So that was interesting. Um, it's been really interesting to see this little snippet of uh, Amba's journey. And uh, one of the things that struck me through all of this is how um, there have always been conversations between you and Basim and Darshan. And it's, it's never been uh, one person saying, you know, this is what we're going to do. And that going forward like that, it, it's actually such a collaboration. And uh, 
another thing that uh, I know Basim mentioned and so did you was uh, the bio dyes. And um, I really did want to ask you um, about um, some of the sustainable practices uh, that you have at AMBA. Yeah, thank you. And yes, um, there's a lot of team collaboration. And I think um, it's important for me at this point, I mentioned this at the very beginning when we were live earlier to say that, well, I'll come back to it, but that's one of the blessings of having worked in Maheshwar. Um, I think for all of us who've worked with the Holkers, there's been such a generosity of spirit in the sharing of the knowledge through the journey. Um, Sally and Richard were like that from day one. And then even through Reva, through Women Weave, and you know, onto Amba, there are so many synergies and so many collaborations because that truly is the only way forward. So we share a lot of our information and knowledge with the community. Um, so many, uh, so many weavers and of course the other organizations now are also using all these different yarns. But for AMBA, our specific sustainability practices, um, transparency being one of the big ones. And I know that Shilanti uh, mentioned this earlier, Shilanti from Sri Lanka was talking about that. We're very transparent. We have a, pro a profit sharing and wage structure that all of us know about. Um, our community work in Maheshwar is very important to us. So after all of these years, you know, running uh, our, our label as a social enterprise, we've managed to have a fabulous eye camp, which was through and through um, everything from eye checkups, prescription eyeglasses to post surgeries. We did over 50 cataract surgeries, 15 LASIK, um, retinal treatments, glaucoma treatments. Uh, we were really, really lucky to work with Dr. I Institute and Dr. Gokuldas from um, the Gokuldas Institute. And we try to, um, we, you know, we keep trying to attain zero waste. We're not brilliant at it, but we're getting there. And we have these little zippy pouches, which are our shawls reimagined in this little useful utility pouch where you can still see, you know, that lovely, um, the lovely woven uh, sort of structure with the border detail. But yes, and, and, and you know, we keep working. To, we, we, we keep working too, because sustainability for me, and I think that comes from having worked on the ground with, um, with Sally in particular, all these years, sustainability for me is really working on the ground. Yeah. I know one of the things that I saw when I visited uh, your home studio, which uh, I hope a lot more of us can do in the near future or the not so far distant future, was uh, the textile panels that you were making using um, other waste from the weaving uh, process. Yes. And uh, those were quite inspirational as well. So that I have to say, I mean, we were just, again, it's all of these, you know, sort of slightly like, you know, these serendipitous moments that occur in our life and we're so lucky. So um, an interior architect had come around to see some shawls and we had, a, you know, we had been sampling and working on a piece and she said, we have a New York, um, a, an apartment that we're doing right now and why don't you create a, a piece for them out of waste? And, you know, we were really excited about that because we had worked with Bodice the label bodice towards the Woolmark um, competition. And Ruchika had worked closely with our team in doing a number of hand inserts with really thick yarn. And the result of that was, well, she's cutting all of that and making gorgeous garments and using those for shawls, but we could do, we could do wall installations. So, you know, it, that kind of went, went it, that sort of went that way. So I know that, um... If we have our session time up, but just before we sign off, I'm going to ask you, um, what do you see for AMBA in the future? What is AMBA's future? So I think it's a conversation, and like you said, there's a lot of conversation that goes on with Darshana Wasim and I, and because this past year was our 20th year in textiles, we're working towards 25 together, but really hoping Wasim will be up on his feet, will always be there, but he'll be up on his feet and he'll be able to interact with designers and other labels and work towards really beautiful, sustainable textiles that are very high end. Um, and for me, that means freeing me up to work in the field and take my knowledge from Maheshwar to other parts. I'm doing that just now in, I've started that process of working with um, Tata Trust um, they've got a beautiful craft initiative called Antaran, and I've been lucky to spend time with the team up 
in the Northeast, in areas like Assam and Nagaland that have not had the sort of footfall and the impact in terms of work, like a town, you know, as a town like Maheshwar has. So there are a lot of uh, congratulatory messages in the chat. Um, and also a nod, of course, to Sally and all of the amazing work that she's done. Um, before we sign off, I'm just going to mention that uh, some of Amba's uh, products, which are all limited editions, are available on the website. So if you want to take a look at those, uh, you can visit uh, the gourmettravels.com website, the Amba page. Uh, the details are in the chat and uh, you can follow it from there. Thank you so much, Hema. That was such a lovely conversation. And uh, I wish Amba another five years together. And of course, you on all of your amazing endeavors that Thanks. you are going to go to. Tasha and... Argo. Thank you very much. First, the whole team. Thank you.